Member statements. The member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. On November 20 at 4:45 p.m. on Royal Road, Royal York Road, Mr. John Offutt was killed in a horrific accident by a cement truck driver. John was a special guy. He was a gifted athlete, a loving husband, and a father of two sons who were devastated by this cycling accident. His wife, Jane, describes him as the most generous person who crammed a ton into the 59 years that he lived on this planet. He supported many charities, from Parry Sound Hospital, after staff helped him recover from a heart attack, to Moorland Kids, which helps disadvantaged children attend summer camps. In his 40s, John quit his job in real estate to become a teacher in the low-income neighbourhood of Thorncliffe Park. This is Haviz, a former student. Mr Offutt was my kindergarten teacher. He was the sweetest, most down-to-earth teacher I've known. Even when I was young, I would always look up to him. I started my bike road safety advocacy early this year. I'm doing it for the people who are scared to raise their voice, who are scared to ride on the road, and now I will do it until we never have another innocent person die on our roads. I believe Mr Offutt would be proud of me, and for that I will do it for him and for the others who never got to finish their ride. Mr Offutt never got to finish his ride. In the last two years, trucks have been involved in killing 15 of 65 uh, fatal collisions. We know what needs to be done. We need to move forward with a Vision Zero plan, and we need to better regulate trucks. And Premier, I'm asking you to move forward on that so we have no more deaths. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Perry Sound Muskoka. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise with, to, uh, to share with the legislature my gratitude to the staff and management of the six long term care facilities in Perry Sound Muskoka. Between the facilities, there has been only been one resident case of COVID-19 and few staff cases and, importantly, no fatalities. I want these hardworking people to know there is more support coming for our seniors. Two weeks ago, I had the privilege of announcing the approval of 64 additional long-term care spaces at Fairburn Nursing Home in Huntsville. With these beds, a new 160-bed facility will be built beside the local hospital and create a campus of care. The board and management of Fairburn, the town of Huntsville, and the district of Muskoka have all, all been working hard on this project. They were all thrilled to hear this long-awaited news, as was Pat Dubay, the donor of the property for the new Fairburn. I want to thank the Minister of Long-Term Care for approving these new beds. I also want to highlight the fact that the districts of Muskoka and Perry Sound are eligible for the expanded community paramedicine program to support seniors in their homes. I believe this program will make a difference for many seniors in our communities. Again, I want to thank the staff working in our long-term care facilities in Perry Sound, Muskoka. Your efforts have not gone unnoticed, and our government is here to support you and your seniors, both in your facilities and in your own homes. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Beaches, East York. Thank you, Speaker. Folks in Beaches, East York are incensed at the Premier's latest sneak attack on the environment. He has tried to pave over the greenbelt, stalled Ontario's transition to clean energy, and cancelled a much-needed plan to put a price on carbon, all the while wasting taxpayer dollars on sure-to-lose court cases and unconstitutional stickers. And now he's at it again, trying to, get con trying to gut conservation authorities and burying his assault in the budget bill. If Schedule 6 is not removed, Ontario's wetlands and forests will be at the mercy of ministerial zoning orders that do not allow for public consultation. Conservation authorities have been powerful guardians of Ontario's wetlands, forests and watersheds since 1946 when they were installed by a Conservative Premier, George Drew, to ensure that critical ecosystems and the biodiversity they hold are protected and that they are not sold for a mess of developer pottage. Shame on the Premier for destroying 75 years of cross-party stewardship of the environment. 
Later today, I will be tabling a petition, 1,000 signatures collected in just two days from residents of my riding, begging the Premier to rethink this short-sighted move. In a time of climate crisis, undermining conservation authorities and their science-based stewardship of wetlands and watersheds makes absolutely no policy sense whatsoever. The Ford government may be willing to pave Ontario's wetlands for a quick buck, but most of us understand that strong environmental oversight is critical in our fight against a climate emergency. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Sarnia Lambton. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and it's a privilege to rise today and announce more strategic investments totaling nearly $5 million in my riding of Sarnia Lambton by the Government of Ontario. This funding is focused on protecting the health and well being of individuals and families in Sarnia Lambton through investments in critical infrastructure projects for the 11 member municipalities in Lambton College and its top-rated Lambton College. First, the Ontario government is providing over $2.7 million in combined federal-provincial funding through the COVID-19 Resilience Infrastructure Team to the municipalities in Lambton County to support key infrastructure projects in our community. With these investments, we are making it possible for the municipalities in Lambton County to get shovel-ready projects underway sooner, giving our local economy a much-needed shot in the arm. Next, I'm pleased to share that the province is investing over $2.1 million in capital funding to help Lambton College address its deferred maintenance backlog, undertake critical repairs and upgrades, and provide a modern and safe learning environment for students, faculty, and staff. Well-maintained facilities and the latest in learning tools and equipment are critical points and parts of a post-secondary education. By investing in Lambton College, <clears throat> our government is supporting economic recovery, creating jobs, ensuring students obtain the skills they need for the in-demand of jobs of today and tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I look forward to sharing more good news about Sarnia Lambton with the House in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Ontario's long-term care and retirement homes are once again facing deadly outbreaks of COVID-19. Thousands of families across the province are worried about their loved ones or they are grieving a tragic loss. While we often speak in this House about nursing homes and how we need to fix them, we don't always highlight the great work of PSWs and the other staff under these difficult circumstances. In my riding of Hamilton Mountain, Grace Villa is currently suffering a horrible outbreak. The staff there are working day and night to contain the spread of COVID. They are the epitome of frontline heroes. This is the home's first outbreak, and the staff are heartbroken that this invisible killer has made their way, its way into the lives of those they care for. When I spoke with these workers, they tell me they are scared and they are getting worn out. They are willingly being tested every five days to keep everyone safe. Some are staying in hotels because they have vulnerable family or they have contacted COVID themselves. They are watching people that they have cared for and come to love become sick and die. They are telling me they need help. They need more PSWs to share the work because they are stretched so very thin. They need mental health supports to get them through this difficult time. They need to know that they have a government that cares about them, not one that just says nice words, but actually provides them the resources they need to save lives. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Orleans. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there has been very real concern raised in the media here in the legislature and from residents across Ontario, including from Orleans, about the government's increased use of ministerial zoning orders. Environmental protections and community-based processes have been put in place over the years to protect agricultural land, to protect fragile ecosystems, and to allow residents, the real people who will be impacted by the government's decisions, to take part in the development and preservation of their communities. The Ford government has significantly, significantly increased the use of MZOs, using as many as 27 since they have been in office, not only to expedite projects that respond to the concerns of COVID, but also to fast-track the building of housing, warehouses, and distribution centres, all of which might be very good projects, Mr. Speaker, but projects that still deserve and require oversight nonetheless. The power to cancel, to cancel consultation, 
subvert the planning process, and plow through development applications outside the municipal uh, standing orders uh, should not be abused. The Ontario Federation of Agriculture, the Greenbelt Council, environmental advocates and elected officials from across the province are raising concerns about this apparent disregard for local environmental concerns. MZOs are putting agricultural lands in Vaughan at risk. They're putting provincially significant wetlands in Pickering at risk. Are the wetlands in Niagara next? Or what about the prime one at class one agricultural land in southwest Ottawa near Barhaven? They've been the apple in the eye of many over the years who wish to create a new massive suburban satellite community. Are they next, mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker? We need to find balance in our development process and in environmental protections, but plowing over local environmental land use rules isn't the way to do it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And next week is Hanukkah. It follows the Hebrew calendar, so you might notice that it moves around from year to year, different weeks before Christmas and sometimes right on Christmas. And it, uh, the holiday dates back to around 200 BC when the Jewish people in the ancient lands of Israel had to battle the Greeks. Unfortunately, most Jewish holidays uh, revolve around wars and enslavement, and we still manage to celebrate and eat a lot of good food. So the modern state of Israel, of course, was established in 1948, and that's very recent, we know, for a country. And Israel, unfortunately, has been perpetually at war with many of its neighbors. And uh, there have been long-standing peace agreements with Egypt and Jordan, but that, we know, has not been enough. Recent events are very promising with new trade and peace agreements and visits even between Israel and many of our, the Arab states surrounding it, including the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Lebanon, and even Sudan. Recently, Saudi Arabia has given permission for Israel to fly commercial jets right over Saudi Arabia, which is very environmental, as we know, when the planes don't have to go around doing a big detour. And so there's a lot to celebrate this Hanukkah. So this holiday season, I hope we all celebrate and we hope for ongoing and everlasting economic ties and peace between Israel and all of its neighbors, and of course, across the world. I want to wish everybody here and outside and across Ontario a very safe, healthy, and happy holiday season. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Sudbury. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I've stood in this house multiple times trying to bring attention to the opioid crisis that's wreaking havoc in my community of Sudbury. This isn't just about bringing awareness to the issue. Something absolutely needs to be done to prevent more opioid-related deaths. Opioids impact more than just the individual. Our whole community is struggling, Speaker. Luckily, Sudbury has shown that we won't give up on the fight to end the opioid crisis. Every day, we'll fight to save our neighbours, our loved ones, and our family members. My city punches above our weight. We're committed to helping those who need help, to helping families heal from these devastating losses and to moving forward with harm reduction programs. We know that harm reduction programs work to reduce risks, to improve health, and to connect people with necessary services. Public Health, Sudbury and District and their partners have been instrumental in the process of trying to get a supervised consumption site in Sudbury. The process is going well. Partners are on board. The Sudbury City Council is on board. Everyone wants to help our community. And the only holdup is government red tape. The Conservative government must speed up the approval process for a supervised consumption site in Sudbury. This will ensure that individuals get the help they need. Families in Sudbury are desperate, Speaker. There are no other similar programs available in the entire Northeast, an area the size of France. We cannot afford to wait for months while more Sudburyans die. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Movember hits home for the Alnwick Haldeman Fire Department as one of their own, Kyle Jeremy, is in remission. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to call rural Ontario home, and I'm incredibly proud of our small town pride. It's in this spirit that the Alnwick Haldeman Fire Department rallied to support Jeremy and the Movember cause. This past weekend, I took a drive out to Wicklow Beach to join the ANH fire team as they took the polar plunge to cap off a successful Movember month where they raised over 32 thousand dollars to help in the fight against prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and to support mental health and suicide prevention. The initiative to enter the Great Canadian Fire Challenge came from Mark Mitro on behalf of the ANH Firefighters Association. Mark is a volunteer firefighter and also challenged our local Northumberland County departments to join the challenge. 
What started as a friendly challenge led to records, Mr. Speaker. Over 150 Canadian firefighter departments took the challenge to see who could raise the most money. I'm proud to say that all Noah Caldeman Township Fire Department Association beat out all other fire departments across Canada, raising over $32,000. Mr. Speaker, this is small town pride. Special shout out to Hamilton Township Fire Department, also in my riding, who came second in the country, raising over $30,000. I'd also like to recognize Cremie Fire Department, Brighton Fire Department, Port Hope Fire Department, Coburg Fire Department, and Trent Hills Fire Department. Mr. Speaker, to all the full-time and volunteers who get up to keep our community safe, who serve in our firefighter departments, thank you for the work that you do every day to keep our community safe. Thank you. Member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thanks very much, Speaker. I'm happy to rise today to share with everyone the amazing efforts that some of our community members have made during this global pandemic. Speaker, two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to visit the headquarters of Global Medic in Etobicoke and take part in an incredible inter-community effort. There, I helped deliver vital supplies and goods to charities across my local community. We visited the Yellow Brick House, a charity that helps and empowers women and children who faced abuse in the past. Our friends at Global Medic also helped the community food banks in both Aurora and Richmond Hill by donating vital supplies such as soap, toothpaste, shampoo, and many other items that are so important, especially at this time of year, Speaker. Global Medics has also taken part in disaster relief and humanitarian aid efforts around the world since 2002, but this time they put their efforts into helping people right here at home in our province of Ontario. This initiative was more than just an act of charity. It was an opportunity to witness something that you might have heard our Premier refer to in the past, and that's the Ontario spirit. This initiative wasn't just about folks in our community helping each other. It was about Ontarians helping Ontarians, Speaker. And this story teaches us that if we can strive to help one another and be kind to one another and to work harder than ever before to help people across this province, across our communities, and even across party lines, because in the end, Speaker, we all call Ontario home, and we're all in this together. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our member statements this morning. I believe the